Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I've got Gary's engine in the honing machine. And I've got my set of rough stones set up. And we will be honing this block. I'll do all four cylinders with the rough stones. There's the um, fine stone set up. Uh, I left about two and a half thousandths to be honed out of here and we're gonna check it as we go with the dial bore gauge and our target dimension is three inches uh, 205 I think you can see that on our box of 80 over pistons and that's our target dimension but as you've seen me do before we'll try all four pistons in each hole and there are tiny manufacturing discrepancies there so we'll fit we'll hand fit every piston uh, so when we start getting around half a thou or less you know maybe three tenths or something we will start fitting the pistons and see how they go in there but for right now uh, we're just going to send those rough stones through. I'll take about a, th a thousandths and a half out, and I'll leave a thousandths for the fine stones. Then we'll go in there with the plateau brush, and then we'll finally go in there and put a small bevel here. Um, and that'll make the uh, piston and ring insulation much easier. But uh, we'll just go after it right now. So hang in there with me, I'll show you uh, bits of the process along the way. Okay guys, got all four cylinders finished with that rough stone and I have the fine in the chuck now and we're going to go through, I've got, I left about a thousandths so we're going to go through and like I say when I get to about a half thou I'm going to start uh, fitting the pistons. Uh, you never know so I like to leave about a half thou. Uh, hand fit the pistons and take it from there so we'll start with number one again we'll send those fine stones down through there and it's just a process and this is a completely manual machine so uh, the stroke is controlled completely by my arm uh, on the newer machines and the, the son of machines and the you know the ones that cost a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, it's an automatic stroker and it has it, it reads from the cutter uh, it's all computer operated so it knows how long to sit at the bottom they call that the dwell um, so that has to sit at the bottom a little bit and then come up and you know it, it, it's all done you could set the machine and basically walk away uh, this is completely manual uh, you have to you have to have a feel for it you can't just run that up and down uh, you know just without any thought you have to dwell at the bottom and uh, when this block comes off the boring you know the boring bar comes off here it's a perfectly round hole now to keep it round and not tapered uh, takes a little bit of technique and I'll show you on the bore gauge when we're done um, I do get the cylinders nice and straight it's just uh, it, like I say it's just a manual machine so I don't have the the luxury of a computer controlled machine I don't know if I'd want one like that but um, I like hand fitting the pistons and going a little bit at a time and that's what I'm going to do next. I'll take that final thousandths out uh, with the fine stones. Okay guys, we're creeping up on it. 
Uh, we got some glare here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. But we got about four tenths left on this hole to get to 3 inch 205. And at this point, I like to start fitting the pistons. So I take all the pistons. Let me zoom you back out of here. I take all the pistons and I try them in the hole. That one's a little bit snug. We got a little bit more to take out of there. And let's try this one. It's about the same. Might be a little bit better on that one. I don't know, we're going to save that one. Call that one number one, I think, if these other ones don't work out. Mm, that one's pretty nice. Okay, so we do one hole at a time. We try all four pistons. We pick which one we like the best. That one's the snuggest. We pick which one we like the best. And then the next hole we select from three. And the next hole we select from two. And then the final one we hand fit to that hole. So I found the one that I like for the number one cylinder. Now, we got some fresh 3000 <coughs> feeler stock. We got it in a handle so that it doesn't cut our hand. We're going to put the piston in there. And we're going to check. This is how they show it in the technical manual. Um, you could fit a piston like this. And that's, that's, that's way too tight. You know, you, you got to be able to pull that feeler gauge out. So, I know I like this piston for number one. I know we got four tenths left to go. We're going to hone that. And then I'll show you what the feeler gauge and everything should should feel like when you pull it out of there. Uh, best to creep up on this. Don't don't get aggressive and really spend a lot of time. The uh, material's coming off pretty fast, uh, even with the fine stone. So go nice and easy, and uh, that's how you hand fit a piston. Okay, I've been creeping up on number one cylinder. And I have the piston I like. And I'm going to show you the fit right now. I hope you can see this in the camera. I'm just going to let that guy go down in a hole. That is a perfect, perfect fit right there. Now, after you fit 5,000 pistons, you can get the feel of it. But if you want to check that, Again, here's our 3000s feeler gauge stock. It's fresh stock. I use fresh stock. Um, I got a lot of feeler gauge stock here, the long stuff. Uh, it's just a starrett handle. It makes it easier so you don't cut yourself. Okay, you take your piston and you put it in a hole. Put your feeler gauge stock down there. Slide the piston down there. And then feel the tension it takes to pull your feeler gauge out. And that should be roughly the equivalent of 10 pounds to pull that out, okay? If it gets stuck or the piston won't go in with that and you can't pull it out with, you know, after you do a bunch, you'll, you'll get the feel of it. But you're going to feel about 10 pounds of pull there. Now that's a perfectly fit piston. That's how it's supposed to be fit. Our dimension came right in exactly at three inches 205 I know I know you probably can't see the, the the gauge but we're right at I don't know if you can see that we're right at 205 we're right on zero um, and that is three inch 205 the top the middle the bottom there's no taper there's no nothing um, that's what you want so I'm just gonna wash off this piston top Get some of that junk out of there, that cast iron grit, okay? And we know that this one now fits the number one hole perfectly. That 
That's number one. Okay? We'll put that back in a box. Now the next hole, we've got three pistons to pick from. So we'll do the same exact thing. We'll run that fine stone through there and we'll fit every single one like this. And this is what you should expect from your machine shop. Okay, now this is Gary's engine. You know, he took a beating on this engine. Um, they never bored or honed the holes. Um, but this is what you should get uh, from your machine shop. This is just standard practice. Um, a lot of guys don't really take the time to fit them like this, but you can get pretty close if you hit that number. Uh, 3 inch 205 on an 80 over piston um, but we're just going to creep up on this I've got a thousand to take out of that hole one thousand out of that and, and, and the final hole and uh, it just takes a little bit of time sit on that bottom there and dwell for a little bit that's what the automatic machines do they know when to stop at the bottom we're just going to hone that and get one thousandth out, or a half dial. We'll start fitting that half dial, but it's just a process, and it makes all the difference in the world if you're going to have a good engine with plenty of power, or you're going to have a dog that won't get up a hill. Okay, everybody, all four cylinders are perfectly bored, honed, and ready for the next step which is that plateau brush. Now, if you looked at those cylinders under a microscope you'd see the stones kinda uh, they tear the cast iron basically. It would look like, would look like all tears in the cast iron. This plateau brush uh, lays everything down, smooths everything out. Uh, it's a very important step uh, people rarely get this at machine shops, I don't know why, but um, we're going to run oh, 25 strokes of the plateau brush with the oil running uh, and then uh, we'll continue on to the next step. Now have all the pistons fit. You can see they're numbered in there. And I am two to three tenths either side of zero depending on the piston um, if you shot for three inch two zero five it'd be fine but uh, as good as the piston manufacturing is these days uh, I still hand fit them and I wind up like I say uh, I think number two cylinder is two tenths uh, that's ten thousandths of an inch so that's a thousand split ten times uh, and number four um, I think that's three tenths over to get the fit I want. So you just got to play with it. Uh, it, it. There's no sense in going through all this work and not getting it perfect. Uh, you have the precision of a hone, so why not make it right? So we're going to take this plateau brush. Like I say, we're going to stroke it through each cylinder, and uh, then we'll then we'll uh, continue on. So let me get set up for that. There's really nothing to it, and uh, no reason why you shouldn't get something like that. But uh, I'm trying to show Gary um, what he should have expected when he paid for his first engine. I'm trying to show him what you get um, when an engine's properly rebuilt. So if you're watching Gary, um, doing the best I can for you and working on it, and hopefully get it back to you very soon. So hang in there with me. Okay guys, final step is to put that little chamfer on the top of the cylinders. I think you can see it right there. So we're just going to go tickle that in with a uh, special sanding disc and I'll show you how we do that next.
Okay, we've got a cone there, rubber cone, sanding disc, and we just got that in a portable drill, and we're just going to kind of work it in there. And that puts a nice bevel on there so your piston and your rings will slide right in there when you go knocking your pistons in. Um, when you're doing this, don't go wiggling around. I see a lot of guys do this and wiggle it all around under that. Just stay nice and straight and steady. And uh, just put a tiny bevel on the top and you'll be all set. Okay, our bevels are cut. And one last thing. What I want to show you is the cross hatch that you should wind up with. You can see we're on 45 degree angle in there roughly. Uh, your cross hatch is where all your oil lives in your cylinder in that cross hatch. So you don't want you don't want them too flat, you don't want them too steep. You're shooting for a nice angle like you see there. And that's something you can easily check before you put your head on. Um, machine shops will take pride in their cross hats that they get on the cylinders. So uh, if they don't let you look at them, they probably didn't do it right. But um, cross hatch is, is critical to oil retention in the cylinder. So uh, just make sure, you know, take a peek in there, make sure what your crosshatch looks like. Um, Gary, yours is perfect. Your engine is now, uh, all the machine work is done on it. Oh, I know I said a couple weeks ago that the crank was coming in in a couple days, but a crank still has not gotten here. I talked to the crank shop. They are slammed, just like I am. Uh, they're not getting uh, cranks out the door as fast as they were hoping. Uh, but they promised me uh, the one for this engine is coming in shortly. I don't have an exact date, but as soon as the crank gets here, uh, assembly can begin. Um, you know, it's got to come out of the tank now and get uh, washed again. And I'll do that when I know the crank is on the way. And um, that's what a properly bored, honed, and finished uh, block should look like and this this doesn't matter if it's a Willys engine if it's a Chevy engine if it's a Ford engine uh, foreign engine it doesn't matter you need round cylinders with no taper and the correct cross hatch it's just um, the fundamentals of an internal combustion engine so um, use these techniques on any engine you're building and you will have a long life perfect engine in the end okay that's all I have for you today uh, thanks for watching and uh, I guess I'll catch you on the next one when we're putting Gary's engine together or we'll jump on Hal's engine I'm not sure where we're going next but thanks for watching I will see you again soon